Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Jake the Genealogist and in today's video we are going to be going over the family tree of Stalin. Now we're going to just jump right into it I guess. So Yosip Bessarianus Jugashvili was born on the 18th of December 1878 in Gori, uh, then part of the Russian Empire but now in Georgia. And his parents were Basarian and Yekaterina Galadze, known as Kiki. Now, Josip, nicknamed Soso, lived a pretty tough life growing up. He was the only child of three born to his parents to survive infancy. His father, a shoemaker, soon drifted over to actually becoming an alcoholic after his business failed. And he unfortunately came home many nights and ruthlessly beat his own wife and son. Now, by 1883, when Yosef was only five years old, he and his mother abandoned his father to begin wandering. And during this time, Yosef was actually able to go to school. And he was actually quite good in school, especially with the fine arts. However, he got into many fights, and he also had serious health problems began to plague him. He got smallpox, and he was even hit by a phaeton, a form of carriage, leaving him with a damaged left arm that would continue up until his death. Now, by the time he was 16, Yosef enrolled at the Tbilisi Spiritual Seminary with a scholarship, um, and he continued his writing of poetry, several of which actually became Georgian classic poems, fun fact, but he actually started to lose interest, and soon was actually declaring himself an atheist at a seminary. And during this time, he began to gain interest in Marxism after reading several pro-revolutionary books, and he began to attend secret Marxist meetings. Now, by 1899, he had left the seminary for good and began attracting support from fellow socialists, and he actually became elected to the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party, or the RSDLP for short. And after, after several trips into prisons, he was exiled to Siberia by 1903. Now, during this time, the RSDLP split into two factions, with the Bolsheviks being headed by Vladimir Ilyich Ul Ulyanov, or Lenin, and the Mensheviks being headed by Julius Martov. Yosef hated the Mensheviks and threw his complete support behind Lenin. Now, by... December 1905, he had finally met the man he supported, Lenin, at a conference in Tampere in modern-day Finland. Now, while the Mensheviks agreed not to use robbery to get funding for their party, both Stalin and Lenin were very vocal in their dissent, so by June 1907, the Bolsheviks actually executed the 1907 Tiflis bank robbery, killing about 40 people. Now, in July of 1906, Yosef married his first wife, Katus Vanitsi, but she died only a year later from typhus, and with her, he had a son, Yaakov, who we'll get to later on. Now, after several more arrests and meetings with other Marxists, he actually became the editor of a new daily Bolshevik newspaper, Pravda, by 1912. Now, later that year, he was sent into exile, in Siberia again, um, but his newspaper Pravda began to gain more steam. His short book Marxism and the National Question became his most famous work, and he penned this book under the name K. Stalin, and Stalin actually translates to Man of Steel, uh, possibly imitating what Lenin did with, with his name. And this is about the time he began actually using that as his name. Now, he was sent into exile again in Turekhansk, having a relationship with a 13-year-old there and getting her pregnant twice. Not nice. Um, while in exile, actually, Russia joined World War I, and Lenin and the gang started planning their attempts for a revolution. Now, Stalin assisted in organizing the July Days Uprising, as well as the coup d'etat, to overthrow the Russian monarchy. And after the Bolsheviks seized control of Russia, forming the new Soviet Union, Stalin became one of the main people in Lenin's government, along with Trotsky and Sverdlov, though he died pretty soon after. And during this time, he married his secretary, Nadezhda Alilueva. Now, 
after draw withdrawing from World War I um, during this time, he became a pretty valuable negotiator in the Russian Civil War that happened after the overthrow of the Russian monarchy. And uh, skipping ahead a few years to the action, by 1923, Lenin was in pretty terrible health, and at this time Stalin had established himself really as Lenin's right-hand man. And when Lenin died in January 1924, Stalin was very well prepared to take power and become the new General Secretary of the USSR. Now, as General Secretary, he did many things to establish his dominance. First of all, he replaced all of the so-called old Bolsheviks, or the academics, with new Communist Party members being favored. And he also started getting chummy with the secret police, um, who began to snuff out dissenters of the Soviet cause. Additionally, he wanted to get rid of Trotsky, now the only person who could really get in his way. And he formed an alliance previously, um, when Lenin was still in power, with um, fellow party members Liev Kamenev and Grigory Zinoviev, and um, against the left movement headed by Trotsky. But he later turned on his so-called allies, but he was able to finally actually deport Trotsky, so there's something. But after this turn of events, uh, Stalin was finally able to establish himself as the supreme leader of the USSR, no doubts about it. And once he did this, he began work communizing, I suppose, the country. And for the, for, for the economy, he put into work his five-year plan to modernize the country and turn the Soviet Union from a market economy into a planned economy. And he also cracked down on practicing religion by making him even more authoritarian by, instead of having a religious figurehead to worship, having himself creating a cult of personality based specifically around him. Now, in his personal life, by 1932, his wife Nadezhda had grown increasingly worse mental problems, actually leading to her suicide later that year after dinner with Stalin flirting with other women. And the saddest part is Stalin actually kept the cause of death from the public and even his own children, instead calling it appendicitis, and only revealing it ten years later. Now, despite Stalin's attempts to get the industries, particularly agriculture, going, famines such as Holodomor and the Soviet famine of 1932 and 1933 really put the USSR's common people between a rock and a hard place. Now, during the same time, Hitler's rise in Germany sparked a great deal of intrigue over how Stalin would actually handle it. Now, he respected Hitler's prowess and leadership, but he didn't like the idea of a fascist political ideology gripping the landscape right next door to the Soviets. So, by 1936, um, he started what's now known as the Great Terror. And this was where Stalin really truly began to become mad with power. Now, after the assassination of Sergei Kurov in 1934, which really kind of started the dominoes falling over, Stalin began to start purging government officials in the Central Committee, both sitting and former. He arrested both Kamenev and Zinoviev from before and had them executed after a show trial as well as hundreds of thousands of other political opponents, non-Russians, and normal everyday criminals. And by 1940, even Trotsky, all the way in Mexico at this po that point, was assassinated on Stalin's order. And now we get to World War II. Now at this point, Stalin did not trust Nazi Germany enough to align with them, but the Allied powers, Britain and France at the time, didn't really trust Stalin enough to ally with him either. So when Germany invaded Poland, the Soviets basically did the same to try to restore order, and Poland became a whole mess for the rest of the war. But basically, um, all Stalin really focused on at this point was really to appease the Germans and not get involved in the war at all. However, he was sort of forced into it by 1941, because the Germans really began their invasion into Russia at that point, and Stalin against the general's will, proposed to do the good old grand Russian tradition of the scorched earth policy, destroying everything in sight to really cut off the German supply lines. 
And in the end, though the plan went against everything that General strategized, the Soviets were able to actually hold out for surrender in Stalingrad, marking a considerable and major turning point in the war. Now, during this time, uh, Stalin was actually seen in a favorable light in the West. Pretty shocking. Uh, many actually called him Big Uncle Joe. So, during the Tehran Conference in 1943, Stalin and the rest of the Big Three, a.k.a. Roosevelt and Churchill and him, strategized and laid the foundations for really how to create peace in Europe again after the war was all said and done. And one of the big promises that Stalin made during this time was to not gain spheres of influence in the rest of the Eastern Bloc around the Soviet Union. But we'll soon see that that is not really kept up. Now, by 1945, the Red Army finally took over Berlin, Hitler committed suicide, and the war in Europe pretty much drew to a close. Now, Stalin's popularity amongst the Soviet people after this, and even the people around the world, was really at an all-time high. But that's not to absolve Stalin from any of the blame. It's estimated that between 26 and 27 million Soviet people were actually killed during the war. A shocking number. Now, as Stalin got older, his health began to rapidly deteriorate, deteriorate but that didn't stop him from starting the Cold War with the USA. Now, he broke this previous promise to Britain and the United States that specifically stated that he wouldn't try to absorb every single other Eastern European country into his sphere of influence, thereby in some part igniting the decades-long stalemate of a Cold War. Now, if you couldn't tell, by this point, Stalin's popularity in the West significantly decreased really quickly, with people now actually comparing him to Hitler. Now, by the 1950s... Um, his health was still deteriorating, and uh, he ignored his doctor's advice to retire, and he stayed in power until the day he died in 1953 from a cerebral hemorrhage and a furosclerosis. Now, Stalin's influence is really huge, but unlike many of the other people covered on this channel, it wasn't really in a good way at all. Under his watch, millions died, and millions indirectly died as a result of his actions. He was simply another textbook example of abusing communism and authoritarianism to a point in which one really can't turn back. And now we move on to his actual family tree. Now, as I mentioned previously, Stalin's parents were Bessarion and Yekaterina Jugashvili, and he had no surviving siblings. Um, their other two sons, Mikhail and Georgi, both died as infants. Now, not too much is really known of Stalin's ancestors bearing the name Jugashvili. Now, his father was born to Vano Jugashvili in Didililo, also in the Tiflis governor governorate, but, like his son Basarian, um, had no siblings. Now, it's worth mentioning that uh, also he later died in 1909 from cirrhosis, likely due to his intense alcoholism throughout his life. However, Stalin's mother did live a lot longer. Uh, Kiki stayed in Tbilisi, and the two exchanged letters, but rarely actually visited each other. And Kiki died in 1937 from heart failure. Now, jumping back to the Jugashvili's, Vano had one sibling, Nikolai, right here. And, as you can see, um, he's grand children right here were Alexander and Nikolai Drugashvili, both of whom still lived in the Drugashvili hometown of Didililo up to their deaths. And their grandson Nugzar Arsoshvili right here um, still actually lives there as a farmer, being the last relatives of Stalin still living in that place. Now, moving to Stalin's children, um... Stalin had three children from his two marriages, Yaakov, Vasily, and Svetlana. Now, uh, starting with Yaakov. Now, uh, Yaakov was abandoned when he was still young, when his father began to gain influence in the Bolshevik party. And as you can probably guess, Yaakov became a pretty shy and depressed kid, even attempting suicide several times. Later on, he actually studied to become an engineer and finished right before the Nazi invasion of the USSR. 
but unfortunately he was actually sent to the front lines and later imprisoned as a prisoner of war and killed at the Sachsenhausen concentration camp, though the circumstances of his death are pretty debated. Now, he, like his father, married twice and fathered three children of his own, and his first daughter died at only eight months old from pneumonia. But his other two children were Yevgeny and Galina Dugashvili, both of whom are not alive nowadays. Now, Yevgeny became known as a big-time defender of his grandfather, and he even became part of the Stalin bloc for the USSR in the 1999 elections. And he died mysteriously in 2016. And he had two sons, Vissarion and Jacob. Now, his sister Galina was uh, much more private and kept to herself. Um, and unlike her brother, she didn't really have too much association with her grandfather. Her mother was Yulia Meltzer, a Jewish ballerina, who, if you couldn't guess, was not really well-liked by Stalin. Uh, she graduated from Moscow State University with a doctorate in philology, and she became a French translator, dying in 2007 from cancer. Now, she married Hussein Ben Saad, a mathematician from Algeria living in Russia, and she had one son, Salim Ben Saad, born handicapped and actually recently went missing. Common fiend, maybe? Now, the next child of Stalin was Vasily, right here. Now, Vasily, like his grandfather, uh, Basarion, became an alcoholic, in this case at a young age due to his mother's suicide. Now, after struggling in school, he joined a military aviation academy, and he joined the Russian Air Force in the wake of Operation Barbarossa, uh, but he was actually demil demoted from his military rank. But... I don't know how, but he somehow managed to get reassigned and became a major general and even later commander of the entire Moscow Air Force. Nepotism, maybe. Now, after he left the army, he was actually arrested on charges of being anti-Soviet and put in prison for seven years. Um, and he died only two years after getting out in 1962, succumbing to his alcoholism. Now, Vasily married four times, and he had four children. Alexander, who took his mother's surname, Nadezhda, Svetlana, and Vasily. Now, I don't have too much information about Nadezhda and Svetlana. Uh, uh, Vasily actually committed suicide in his 20s, but Alexander I definitely have much more info about. And um, Alexander Bodonsky became a very famed film and theater director, and was awarded the People's Artist of Russia Award because of it, and he died in 2017 without children from cancer. Now, moving on to the youngest child, Svetlana. Now, Svetlana took her mother's last name of Alyulueva, and she was definitely the apple of Stalin's eye being taken everywhere he went. Now, by the time she was 16, she fell in love with Alexei Kapler, a 38-year-old filmmaker who was Jewish. But if you couldn't already foresee what was coming, Stalin sent him to exile. Now, by 1944, she married Grigory Morozov, another Jew, well, wow. <laughs> but once again, Stalin disapproved and they were forced to be divorced. Um, now, she had several more marriages, totaling four in all. And interestingly enough, by 1967, she made the internationally astounding decision to actually defect to the United States, that's right. And she actually later lived um, for many decades in Wisconsin, but often moved all over the place to England and even back to the USSR for a short period of time. And by 1978, she became a fully-fledged, naturalized American citizen. Now, she died in only 2011, um, only 10 years ago, from complications relating to colon cancer. And she had three children, Yosef, who kept his mother's surname, Yekaterina, and um, Olga. Now, Yosef became a cardiologist, and he died in 2008 uh, while still living in Russia. Uh, her daughter, Yekaterina, um still alive, um, last name Zdanova, um, is actually a volcanologist and geologist, um, and she was last reported studying a volcano in the Kamchatka 
Oblast. And her youngest child, Olga, now known as Shreese Evans, born in the U.S., is actually a Buddhist, currently living in Portland, Oregon, running a beauty boutique and posting some rather puzzling images to social media, as you can see. And so it's pretty crazy, the dynamic between all of Stalin's grandchildren. You got people who were intensely supportive of their grandfather, and then you got people who live on the opposite side of a world, running a beauty boutique. Um, and it's also, also worth mentioning some of the illegitimate children of Stalin. Now, he had two sons claimed to be children, um, illegitimate children of him. Alexander Davidov, who was actually confirmed recent, just recently for a DNA of his son, and so we know that's a real connection, and fun fact, that was for the 13-year-old that he violated um, back in, during exile. And um, another son, Konstantin Kuzakov, um, who's a claimant to be Stalin's illegitimate son, though nothing is really 100% proven at this point. And so that about finishes off this video. So thank you if you sat for this entire very long video today, and I hope you enjoyed, and I'll be back with more soon. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.